Good afternoon on this fantastic Friday, February the 24th, 2023. As always, my name is David Schlothauer, and in this video, we are tracking a severe weather episode for not only Sunday now, but for Monday. As the Storm Prediction Center has already issued an enhanced risk, a level 3 out of 5 on the severity weather index for day 3 for Oklahoma and Northern Texas, followed by now a day 4 15% chance of severe weather for Eastern Kentucky and Eastern Tennessee. So when we time this out on the latest European model for Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon, we can see where the severe weather and supercells will be popping up. And the European model indicates that the severest weather could develop across Western Oklahoma. That's why the Storm Prediction Center has issued an enhanced risk for severe weather for Northern Texas and Oklahoma with now a 30% chance for severe weather impacts over Oklahoma City and southeastern Oklahoma. So if you're in western Oklahoma, western central Kansas, and certainly across the border here of Texas and Oklahoma, you definitely need to be watching the skies because we could have embedded supercells within the line of strongest storms along that dry line as it moves and races rapidly eastward. So going into the evening hours here of Sunday into Sunday night, into Monday morning, you can see that comma-shaped system. The, the structure is a comma shape, and that indicates we have strong wind dynamics. In fact, we could see some severe weather potentially over Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas, including for eastern Oklahoma, northwestern Arkansas, and even into Missouri. But this is going to kind of bundle up in itself as the instability slowly weakens a little bit. And we can see that taking place by Monday. Take note of that system, a very well dynamic system. 977 millibars over southern Iowa. But look at that. We got some showers, we got some thunderstorms over Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and that's why the SPC has went ahead and issued a day four slight risk for severe weather over the central and eastern Tennessee Valley. This could include the possibility for some hail that could be significant. We could, not significant really, but quite a bit of hail, and we could see some damaging wind gusts uh, as well as maybe a quick spin up or two as that system races on by. But take note, lots of heavy snowfall and freezing rain potentially over central Michigan and central Wisconsin, and that kind of moves into the northeast with a second low pressure system that wants to try to develop. Actually, a second one develops to its southeast from the leeward side of the Appalachians, and that could become the main surface low as that moves offshore, bringing a chance of snowfall for the northeast, but not too significant as far as snowfall totals go. It's gonna be about that severe weather. So now, why is this going to be such a big problem for the high plains as far as strong winds go, as far as severe weather goes? Well, when we take a look at the 500 millibar height map here, on the uh, weather, uh, Pivotal Weather website, we can see we have 124 knot winds ejecting into New Mexico by 18Z on Sunday. This would be about noon or your lunchtime in Central Standard Time. And this is going to continue all the way into even Sunday night. So we can see there is your trough here. And take note of the winds here. They kind of come down and around this trough in such a way that this is negatively tilted. And so out ahead of this, we have a lot of barrel clinic ascent. We have a lot of falling heights and pressure falls out ahead of this over um, southeastern Colorado. That's where our surface low is going to form. And so what that's going to do is this is going to draw in moisture off the Gulf of Mexico into central Texas and Oklahoma. As that does so, we increase the instability. And the shear is going to be very strong. We're talking shear values anywhere between 50 to 80 knots throughout the system. In fact, if we do take a look at our shear profiles over northern Texas, western Oklahoma, we got shear values between about 75 to almost 90 knots. That's very strong on the NAM 12 kilometer model. And that shear is going to be very strong here. 80 plus knots over Oklahoma. So this is where we really got to watch primarily in this corridor for the best chances for the most significant severe weather publicistic outlook. All right, 
When we take a look now at our dew point forecast, we can see dew points gonna be a little bit of modest. There's some modification to this because one, the trough is gonna be moving through pretty stinking quickly. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of time for moisture to really return as that surface flow rapidly develops and moves off to the Northeast. And you can see that shaping up here on the the European model dew point forecast. We do get dew points into central Oklahoma up to about 62 to maybe 65 degrees. But again, look at this. This is going to be moving through so quickly. Some of the moisture actually is going to get overtaken by this dry line and cold front. So by, say, Monday morning, you got some modification to this air mass. You still do get dew points here in, say, Memphis, Tennessee into the 60s, uh, maybe some mid-60s, low 60s but it could be a lot more moist. Now, what about our instability? Instability, also a little impressive here. Anywhere between about 750 joules to maybe 1,000 joules of surface base cape, mixed layer cape on the order of about 500 joules per kilogram. So we're gonna look at some weak to maybe modest instability across western Texas into western Oklahoma that will likely help to initialize these severe storms. Therefore, as I did mention earlier, the SPC does have that enhanced risk for severe weather over Oklahoma, as well as southwestern Oklahoma and northeastern Texas. Not only that, Kansas is under a slight risk for severe weather. But now, based on my new data that I've collected, some of the downtrends on some of the models, we are I am going to preclude a severe weather outbreak risk here over the Oklahoma area. But nevertheless, it won't matter. We're probably going to end up live streaming on this either way uh, because this is going to be a fast, aggressive moving system that we definitely need to monitor. And so that's why we're going to be live streaming. Not only that, there's a 30% chance of severe weather probabilities non-SIG for northern Texas and for Oklahoma. We will see how this all evolves in later outlooks by the Storm Prediction Center. But again, as I did mention earlier, there is a slight risk, a day four for eastern Tennessee and eastern Kentucky. All right, so definitely want to monitor that because we could be looking at a few spin-ups or tornadoes, strong winds, and maybe some pea-sized, maybe quarter-sized hail with that. But otherwise, that is going to sum it up for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, the production that I do put into these videos, please consider subscribing. It really, really means a lot, folks. It really does. I can't do this without all of your diligent support because, again, when I send this out to you all, you as viewers like to share this. When you share it, it hits a wider audience. Then those people will share it. So if you haven't subscribed yet, if you haven't liked the video yet, please consider doing so. Let's get this video up and over 100 likes. We did it in our last video. Let's try to do it in this video. So thank you all for watching and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with a live uh, with a live severe weather coverage type stream for no wait not tomorrow tomorrow's saturday dag nabbit um sunday see i'm getting ahead of myself my days are confused here i feel like today's saturday but either way i will be live on sunday tracking the severe weather in the evening hours hope to see you all then